Welcome back to Bash Bros in episode 93 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. You are back for the fallout show of the I Your Bollocks pay-per-view, which you guys were not here for, so let's take a look at how that pay-per-view went down. All in all, we scored a 74, not bad, not bad at all with a card that looked a little bit something like this. So Chris Hero finally stood up to his former friend James Storm after multiple attacks on Hero and Claudio Castagnoli. And he got the win. Later on in the night then, Barb Wire Dolls defeated Maki Ito and Riho uh, when Liv, not Liv Morgan, when Mad Marley Quinn got the pin on Maki Ito. Post match then, Maki Ito is absolutely livid and throws a bit of a tantrum in the ring. Then in a non-title match, Ozzy Open defeated the Velocities. This came about after Grizzled Young Vets turned down a tag title shot to play some mind games with the champs Ozzy Open. I can I just say, one hell of a performance from the Velocities. Um, Jude London got a 69 and Paris De Silva got a 72. Technically, on average, they actually outperformed Ozzy Open and Ozzy Open is one of our best tag, is probably is the best tag team. Then Kip Sabian defeated Ace Austin in an ODQ match, showing his um, underrated gimmick a bit more, his uh, a bit more of an unhinged side to him. Then in six man tag action, CCK defeated Epitaph um, with Jonathan Grisham tapping out Eddie Dennis. So a little bit of revenge for Grisham there. And in our main event, Kenny Omega retained over Pac and Pentagon Jr. in a triple threat match for the world title. But post match, a message appeared on the Titan Tron with a message about being stabbed in the back. And a hooded figure attacks Kenny Omega before security runs them off. So that is what you missed over the weekend in game. With this being a fallout show for a pay-per-view, let's take a look at the storylines going forward for the next month. So the P12 is wrapping up this month and um, the finals will take place at the Fear No Man pay-per-view. Uh, in two episodes time we will have a contract signing with between the finalists so keep an eye out for that. Jamie Hayter vs Martina is a new storyline we're going into which will lead to the debut of B Priestley. So this storyline will pretty much be that Martina is happy that Jamie Hayter has joined NPW. Uh, but not realising that Jimmy Hitter is kind of a dick and uh, Ray O'Reilly who is friends with Martina in KFEB trying to kind of point out that Jimmy is bad news uh, and then that will lead to Bay Priestley's debut whenever Jimmy Hitter reveals her true colours and attacks Martina and requ requires a new partner. Davy Boy Smith versus Kip Sabian another new storyline. It, it, this is a, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird one, it's a bit of a weird one, but literally this is leading up to uh, the debut of Sheamus. Don't know how it'll fit in, I don't know. I always wanted Davey Boy to be Sheamus's first opponent because they're kind of big guys, they can brawl. And then I kind of thought, well, if Davey's joining British Wrestling Embassy, I could have like a storyline where Sheamus just tears through all of the embassy to get through to Davey Boy. So why not do it that way? way but then I thought how do I establish a storyline without just having Seamus show up one day and then I went with Kip Sabian because he's got momentum and that's as far as my thought process got before I was like fuck it let's just go for it so there you go it might make sense probably not though uh, another new storyline but I have talked about the plans for this one in the past so Joe Henning versus Ricky Knight Jr. So yes, another Rev Pro debut with Ricky Knight and his cousin, Brittany Knight. 
aka Soraya, aka Paige, uh, debuting. So this will kind of be a legacy battle of you know Henning and uh, Tully Blanchard talking about you know these great names of American wrestling and the knights coming out and be like, there's only really one knight or only one wrestling name that care they care about in the UK and that's knight, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. This will also lead to the debut of Cody Rhodes further down the line too, throwing his namesake into it, I guess, I don't know. Barbed Wire Dolls versus Maki, Ito and Riho. So this has about two months left of it. So, the Barbed Wire Dolls, with the win for Mad Marley Quinn, she will get a title shot against Maki Ito one on one, and then uh, that will lead to the debut of Raven Cre- or the re-debut, the the repackaging of Raven Creed being brought in by Jake the Snake Roberts to replace Crazy Mary Dobson within that faction, and she will attack Crazy Mary Dobson, and then the blow off match will be some sort of formulation of. Maybe Mary Dobson, Creed, and Maki, or two separate matches, Maki versus Marley, and it'll be something like that, anyway. So the Prestige versus the Aussie Open have uh, has evolved into the Velocities versus the Prestige versus Aussie Open. The Velocities really, really impressed me during the pay-per-view match, you know, scoring 70 is mental. I think that match is only like 15 minutes long too, so... They more than deserve to be in the title picture. So this is kind of going to be Velocities and Aussie Open. Uh, both Australian teams kind of partnering up, being buddy-buddy, uh, to take on the Prestige. I plan on doing something with this storyline, and I don't know how I feel about it, but we'll see. Kings of Wrestling versus Lethal and Storm. This will wrap up in two months' time. Um, can't really continue this one too much this month as Claudio will be a part of the P12 final. So yeah, unfortunately, can't really do the t- the blow-off match this month, but no reason why we can't do it next month. And finally, AJ Styles versus Kenny Omega. So this has kind of already started with, uh, I mean, big shock, AJ Styles is gonna be the attacker of Kenny. Like, it, it, w- I, I'm pretty sure I've told you this, but yes, the plan is to do this storyline don't believe it has been done anywhere else. Uh, I don't really have any future plans other than Styles versus Omega. I can't think of any other debuts or twists they add to it um, other than just them having belt their matches. So, so that is the storylines going forward for the next couple of months. And the reason you guys are back tonight is because, even though I just spoiled it a minute ago, we're going to have the reveal of who the hooded figure that is attacking Kenny Omega and who that is. Say this, Styles. There is absolutely no news to discuss, so let's just get in the book in the show, shall we? Okay, and um, we are back. Coming at you from Cathay's Bingo Hall in Wales. It is Thursday Night Wanted. A lot of promos and angles on this show. As you can see here, we are at 68% and somehow still not penalised, even though we're supposed to be at 75%. So, um, yeah. Not, um, don't know why. Show must go on, so let's start the show. Backstage promo, and Will Hobbs is tired of this cat and mouse bullshit with himself and Jay Lethal and challenges him to a match next week. Then, in a pre show matchup, Martina won a fatal four way match by pinning Debbie Keitel. Uh, Debbie had a 51, Kelly Ray had a 56, Martina had a 54, Rhea a 52. All in all, a 58 rated match, which is good. Next up in a P12 match, Will Hobbs defeats Stevie Boy to bring Block B to a close. And as you can see here, the winner is Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, Stevie had a 49, Will Hobbs had a 50. Not great from either guy. Um, Severe lack of psychology, apparently, for both guys, which is a bit worrying as it was only a 15 minute match. Uh, But 42 overall, which is okay. Post match then. Jay Lethal comes out and low blows Will Hobbs for like the third time, I think. So, you know, rest in peace, Will Hobbs nuts. And screams in his face he could have been someone if he had joined him. He could have been a superstar alongside Jay Lethal. But now he's nothing and he agrees to the match next week. 66 rated angle. Next up in a backstage promo, the Velocities are feeling confident after their great performance at the pay-per-view. And they're going to ride this confidence going forward. 
The Prestige then interrupt the promo, saying that the Velocities, they need to remember their place. And that's at the back of the line. And that they wouldn't have even been on the pay-per-view if the Grizzled Young Vets hadn't turned down a title shot. A 59 rated promo. Backstage promo when Joe Henning says that there's a list of names that the UK fans need to learn to respect and at the top of that list is Henning. A 56 rated segment and Tolly Blanchard got a bonus for helping Joe during this promo which is good. Next up in a squash match pretty much Joe defeats Dean Allmark uh, with the McGilla cutter. Dean got a 52, Joe a 59 which is very good from Joe and uh, 57 overall which is good. Next up in a backstage angle, Martina and Rhea O'Reilly are cooling down from their match earlier in the night, I don't know. Um, but then Martina sees Jamie Hayter, runs over and gives her a big old hug and Jamie Hayter, you can tell from her face she just wants absolutely none of it. Martina asks what she's doing here and she says she has a tryout match tonight uh, for a notorious pro wrestling contract. And she kind of pushes herself off of uh, Martina. Uh, smiles kind of politely, I guess, and goes out towards her match. So Jimmy debuted her hateful gimmick and it got a poor, that's a bit shit. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, hmm, gonna have to try something different there. Then in that upcoming match, so Jimmy Hitter defeated Rachel Ellering in 11 5 with a Falcon Arrow. Jimmy Hitter a 52, which is good, and Rachel Ellering a 36, so 49 overall, which is okay. And in our main event for the number one contendership for the NPW Championship, uh, Pac defeated Chris Hero, Kip Sabian and Pentagon Jr. Uh, when he, he pinned Pentagon uh, due to the hooded figure, aka AJ Styles, interfering. So AJ would kind of uh, interfere, but he would just kind of attack everyone. So both like Hero, you know, Kip and Pentagon. And then Pac would just use the the opportunity to score a quick pinfall on Pentagon. So the breakdown then: Hero had a 63, Kip had a 66, Pac a 76, and Pentagon a 65. And AJ's phenomenal one gimmick got great. And Kip and Vicky have a managerial bonus, which is good. All in all, 72, which is very good. Post match, then so Pac's kind of coming up to the hooded figure, and he's like, "Yeah, buddy, friend, thanks, thanks for the assist, haha." But then the hooded figure turns around and attacks Pac and lays him out with a Styles Clash. The hooded figure then gets up and reveals himself to be AJ Styles before all agents and security and Conor McGregor run out and chase away AJ Styles. 80 rated segment because Connor's there. And that is the show. 73 overall, which is very strong for our weekly TV show. Okay, so there's no news to discuss coming out of the tapings. So the next time you guys will be back is actually going to be for the Rev Pro tapings uh, coming up, which is on Tuesday. Because we have one of the longest running storylines coming to a close. With Kanji versus Sanitarium. And also a couple of debuts down there. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. So, thank you very much for joining me as always. If you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like. And subscribe to the Bash Bros channel. For more notorious and other great shows. If you have any ideas for storylines, tag teams, factions, name it in the comments and I will try to book it for you. And with all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.